So there are various reasons why someone may want to undergo rhinoplasty. And when we use the term rhinoplasty, we're generally talking about an aesthetic result. That is, we're talking about reshaping the nose. Sometimes patients come in for functional reasons, that is, they can't breathe. Their septum might be deviated. And in fact, if we're addressing that deviated septum, it may have an improvement on the overall appearance of the nose, and we might call it a septorhinoplasty. So sometimes when people have breathing problems, we're addressing both issues. If the people don't have breathing problems, we use the term rhinoplasty. One of the basic things that we need to take a look at with rhinoplasty are the overall facial analysis. When we look at a face, we look at a face from the hairline to the brow, the brow to the base of the nose, and the base of the nose to the chin. That should represent about one-third of the face in both in height and in projection. So in other words, patients sometimes come in and say, hey doc, I need a nose job. Their nose is perfectly fine. What they have is a very weak chin. So it's our responsibility during the consultation to review this very carefully using photographs so that we understand where we're starting and what the goals are. A rhinoplasty procedure basically consists of an operation typically taking anywhere from 60 to 90 minutes and it's generally performed under IV sedation. That is, you come in, we start an IV, and we give you medication so you're completely unaware of what's going on. There's no need to intubate you, there's no breathing tube and you're not paralyzed, but you're unaware of what's going on. What we'll typically do then is we'll localize the area, we'll numb the area up, and we'll make place some very small incisions inside of each nostril and most of the rhinoplasties that we perform are performed via an open approach. And all that means is there's a little tiny incision along an area we call the columella right here. It heals beautifully, but it gives me exposure to the cartilage and the bony aspects of the nose. Depending upon what we're trying to reshape, if we're reshaping a bump on the nose, we might use a little instrument much like a nail file. To, it's called a rasp. Uh, most of the work is very detail-oriented and it ha addresses the cartilage in the tip so we don't have a bulbous tip or a wide tip. We can refine the tip. There are, some, there are some descriptions that we use during the consultation that are important to understand. One of the terms is called projection. If I'm Pinocchio and I'm over-projected, we want to deproject that tip. Asian and African-American nose are what we call more platyrrhine or flat and in that instance, many times we're trying to reproject the tip. Rotation is another term that's important. This area between the nose and the lip is what we call the nasal labial angle. And the nasal labial angle in women, we typically like to see about 100 to 110 degrees. And in men, we want it a little more acute, maybe 95 to 100 degrees. When we look at projection, if we, t if we look at the base of the nose and we look at the distance between the base and the tip of the nose and the base and the upper lip, that should be about a one-to-one -one ratio. Ideally, that's what we like to see in terms of projection. Many patients ask about their nostrils and there is a quick thing that you can do to assess if your nostrils are too wide and that is if we look where our eyelids attach, we call this the medial canthus, and we drop a vertical line down along that area. In a Caucasian, we like to see the nostril fall roughly in those lines. Again, a more platyrrhine nose, a flatter nose, an Asian or African American nose, many times the alar base will be a little bit wider. And there's some simple maneuvers we can uh, perform if, in fact, we want to uh, narrow, narrow the nostrils. One of the biggest things that we like to communicate with patients is what is going to happen after the procedure. I have not packed a nose since 1997. If you jump online and you start reading things, or if you ask patients who've undergone rhinoplasty, probably the only thing they'll remember is how awful it was with the packing in their nose. I'm about six feet tall. We used to place six feet of packing in each side of the nostril. You'd come back several days later and we would start pulling it out. You would pass out, it's gross, there's mucus, there's blood, there's bleeding, we do not use nasal packing. You do not need to use nasal packing. Most patients do quite well. There's a little bit of skin color tape over the, the dorsum, over the bridge of the nose, typically for about five days or so. Most people breathe better afterward if we're addressing some functional or breathing issue. And patients may take a half of a Vicodin or Tylenol that night. Generally speaking though, there's not much pain or discomfort associated with rhinoplasty. 
Following rhinoplasty, we might recommend that you don't smile a whole lot. Your nose is going to feel a little bit stiff in this area. Uh, we don't want you eating real hot temperature or hot spicy food-wise because we want to diminish the blood flow to that area just to reduce the risk of any bleeding. When the tape is taken off, typically about the fifth or sixth day, you'll see the results immediately. There are certain results that will take up to a year to see, and that's when we're doing a lot of tip work. Patients who have particularly moderate or thicker skin, it takes a bit longer to see some of the results. These changes continue to occur slowly over time, but they do continue to occur. One of the biggest questions we get with rhinoplasty is, do we need to break the nose? And uh, let me start off by saying, regardless of what we do from a rhinoplasty standpoint, the recovery and the overall process is about the same from your experience. Let's say, for example, you have a big bump on your nose, and one of our jobs is to reduce that. You don't want that big hump. Let me explain what happens when somebody comes in and they have a bump on their nose. That bump on the nose is up in this area, and let's pretend that that's at the peak of this triangle. If we remove that bump, we're converting a roughly triangular shape into something that's more now trapezoidal. If we left the nose alone there, you would develop what we call an open roof deformity. It would look flat like you walked right into a wall. So our job then is to make a little cut in the bone, the osteotomy, where we simply drop the side walls of the back, back so that we, we can reconstitute the natural triangular shape in the nose. When we break a nose, all we're doing is making a little cut in the bone. With regards to overall recovery, there isn't any more time involved. Uh, it's still about a five to six day process before we take the tape off.